In this video, we use artificial intelligence. We train a model, or let's be honest, we get a model trained for us to recognize hands. What a fantastic way to learn about computer vision, to learn about the uses. Do you trust Tesla to use this kind of tech to drive a car all by itself? Or do you think it would be a good idea if it had some LiDAR and radar? These are important points, important questions, and you will get the chance to learn exactly how this works. So let's code on. So the first thing you want to do for a computer vision model is train it. And yep, that takes a while. Train, train, train. Thumbs, thumbs, thumbs. And um, yeah, this could take a while because to get a decent model, you need at least 50 images per hand. And you need a variety of hands because you've got all sorts of shapes, sizes, etc., etc. And uh, yeah, that could take a while. So instead, what I shall do is I shall use a pre-trained one from Google called Media Pipe. So that's how we'll do it. And that's how we'll get into our coding. The rest of today's thing is all in Python. So I hope you're ready. We'll be using PyCharm, but you can use any IDE that you like. So the next thing we need to do is a pip install. This is dead easy in PyCharm. You can literally right click on it. So we're just going to right click and you can see this got some actions. Now it's really important to notice that even though it's CV2 that you're at the module you're going to import, the library is called OpenCV Python. So that's what you'll need and that's the first library to import. The second library is Metapipe and this is where we get our fully trained model from. There's quite a bit of code going on here and rather than you watch me type it in real slow and play around with it, I thought you'd probably prefer to have it in the description. So that's there for you. And while you're there, why don't you think about a sub to the channel? It'd be much appreciated. I really want to hit that thousand subs uh, by the time 2024 is done. So please, a sub for the channel would be greatly appreciated. And I'm going to explain what each bits of this done and some of the fun things you can do with it. So you've seen the two imports, CV2 and Media Pipe. Media Pipe we're uh, importing as MP because it's very long and it's going to be used an awful lot. So you're going to see this quite a lot here. And we're just going to initialize the Media Pipe hands model. We need the MP solutions hands. That's the model that's been trained for hands. And we also need the hands system so there's a bit of configuration the static image mode is false because we're going to use video the max number of hands is set to one but you can have two or even more and the minimum detection confidence is 0 0.5 you can reduce that if you're not too worried these are things that you can play with and have fun and then the final two lines are to help it out for visualization now the next bit is something I've added to make it a little bit more obvious, particularly if uh, you're working, say, with students or you're not doing this uh, for general, for testing purposes. This will draw a grid with labels. So it'll draw a horizontal grid and it'll draw a vertical. Now, what you need to understand about computer science and gaming and those kind of graphical applications is the column doesn't begin where you expect it to in a lot of maths it's not in the middle of the screen no it's in the top left hand corner so that's really important because when you're thinking about your thumbs up and your thumbs down what exactly are you going to compare on the y-axis and think about that quite carefully we're now going to start our main loop sometimes called a gaming loop if it's a game sometimes called the windows loop but it's the main loop that goes around and goes round and round while we're doing it so while capture is opened we're going to return the frame we're going to read these captures and if not returned it's just going to continue round now some of this is uh, important part that we just need to code but these are all put and things now one of the things we're going to do is we're going to use keys so if you press g the grid will appear and if you use H, the grid will disappear. I chose that H because it's just next to the code. So if the grid is true, then it's going to draw that grid. Otherwise, it's just not going to draw that. And it's going to put those labels in for us. Now, the next part is just important parts that we need to put in uh, to help us out to make sure it's actually doing it and to check if we're getting a hand in or not. 
and this is where the machine learning is doing all the work for us you can imagine how complicated this would be to do it and what we're also doing here is we're actually going to draw a frame with the land hand landmarks to make it a bit easier for you to understand exactly what's going on and so you can see the framework of the hands and you can see what is exactly is being tracked and so that's doing it literally for each of these parts each of these hand connections so that you can see what is going on this is quite a long line because there's quite a bit to put in here and configure There is actually a manual for this, which is uh, quite a shock, and it was quite readable, so that was quite nice to know. And I will put that in the description for you so you can play with it. Now, what we're specifically picking on here is the thumb landmarks, which are the hand landmarks, and we have to know that these are uh, 1 to 5, which is very convenient. And the thumb tip uh, is 3 in this case, with the thumb base being 1. So those are important things to be aware of. And then we have our thumb coordinates. Now this sets it up nicely so that you can have a play with it, you can have a go. But what I would like you to have a think about is how can we make this fun for the students? How can they feel a little bit of ownership of their learning and not just be copy typing or copy and pasting and, and seeing what's going on? And I think that's really, really important here. So, so far a lot of this is set up, it's helping students to understand what's going on and it's helping students to, to see the code in action without taking too much of the work away from them where they can't see it. Now the next part's the really interesting bit and this is the bit where you can get students to modify and play with the code a little bit and have a go. So the question is, is the thumb up or is the thumb down? And if you don't want to include and you think you can figure out that code, that would be great. Have a go now, have a little play, see if you can do it without any help. Otherwise, I will give you your first big clue. So pause now if you want to have a go by yourself. Otherwise, I'm going to give you your first big clue. If thumb tips, cords, thumb tips, cords, one, okay? Now there's obviously a blank in that middle bit there between the square dash and the T. But which way is it? Which way is it? Is it up or is it down? Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. Have a go, have a play. If not, here we go. Left or right, left or right. It's that way round. Now of course you could have written it the other way and that would be absolutely fine. But that is the way I've coded it and that's the way it looks. And of course, if the thumbs up, we want to print thumbs up, which is great. And I didn't teach you this part, but you can put text in there so that it actually shows in the frame itself. Now, the rest of this is pretty obvious. It's going to be a simple else. And that is how we do it. So the final few commands are here. The first one is to quit, which is just press Q to end it. And the final bit is calling up the cap release. So each time you want the capture and that stops the capture. And finally, the destroy all windows that stops all the windows. So nice and clean, couple of lines there just to finish the code. Okay, so let's, uh, here's the final product. Let's have a think about it. Thumbs up, thumbs down thumbs down. How accurate this, how much can you trust it? Because this is what Tesla are using to do their detection, this kind of computer vision. Now this is on a five-year-old laptop. Um, it's not the fastest, it's not the slowest. But my real inspiration for this was the toilet control system. Can you imagine how much cleaner it is to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down if the bathroom is, rather than touch the screen? That doesn't seem like a great idea. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy this video, you don't need to do nothing. Goodbye, see you later. But if you really do want to have new videos and have fun videos, then please do suggest what you want, suggest what things you'd like, and a sub for the channel, you know that would be awesome. Until next time, see you later.